Hey everybody, Jay Barino here. Welcome back. Thanks for joining me today as I continue through Metroid Prime. We're making our first pathway through Magmore Caverns, which is a high heat area. We're able to enter it because we beat Flagra and got the Various Suit last time. And completing the early sections of Chozo Ruins. So now really the only way to, to progress is, is through Magmore Caverns. And there are five main areas in the game, if you don't count the the prologue and, like, the very end area either. Uh, Magmore Caverns is the only one that has an elevator that takes you directly to the other four. I shouldn't have done that because we have to scan one of those. We'll, we'll get one further in. That's all right. And here's our titular Magmore. We have a high amount of health. Let's see if we can use some, some rapid-fire missiles. I'm not great at the timing of that, but I'm still able to shoot them probably two to three times faster by doing it that way. Again, you cycle between shooting a missile and then shooting your regular power beam. Sort of like entering missile mode and then exiting missile mode. Uh, these things, they, uh, they explode when you shoot them and leave behind a, a gas that damages you. I've actually found it's easier to just not even bother killing them. Just try to jump past them. We could do that here. And even if they hit you, uh, you're probably going to take less damage than jumping through the gas cloud they leave behind. These enemies can be really irritating. Uh, if, they, if you let them grab you, they will... Uh, They'll pick you up in Morph Ball and then spit you out on the other side where you were trying to enter from. You lose a little bit of progress because of that, which can be irritating. I'm going to destroy these because I'm actually going to go down to the bottom and collect a missile expansion, and the gas will have uh, dissipated by then. We'll go under the floor. I'm trying to practice what I had talked about in the previous episodes, which is, you know, keeping commentary to more of a minimum. Now that the Chozo Ruins intro is, is pretty much done, that first part of Chozo Ruins really introduces you, I think, to the exploration. I think sort of the Metroidvania aspect of finding different pathways that you can't go through yet until you find new equipment. But now that we have the Varius suit and we have access to Magmore, which functions as a, a gateway to all the different zones in a way, uh, there's a bunch of different ways we could go. We could have backtracked all the way through Chozo and gone to Talon Overworlds. Uh, we could explore all around Magmore, which is obviously what I'm doing right now. Again, a couple different options. There isn't just one distinct path, um, though my plan is to use Magmore as a pathway through to the next major area called Findrana Drifts. To get our next major upgrade. Get, and you know what? It's fine. I'll take the damage. It's got some classic turrets on fucking islands. I would consider this room to be pretty central to Magmore Caverns in the sense that it's one of the few rooms in Magmore that actually branches to, to other directions. So if we were to go through that pathway, it would eventually take us to an elevator to Talon Overworld, which we'll be using that pathway throughout the course of the game. But there's nothing in Talon Overworld for us to do right now. So rather than backtracking and, you know, information gathering, because I already know what's there, I'm going to just move upwards through this room to the other doorway to get to Fendrana. We can scan some stuff here for pirate information. It 
So the space pirates are trying to utilize the geothermal power here to uh, to power their operations. So it's like there's this room here that actually has machinery in it, and that's because of the space pirates. All right, we can actually get an energy tank in here if we can cleverly use double bomb jumps. You have to do it three times. Ah, okay, one more. That's not going to work. It's fine, these boxes will respawn. There we go. Very nice. I think there's a total of 14 energy tanks, I want to say. Maybe it's 12. I'm not sure if it's different between the Prime games or not. So very little to do in Magmore. But Fendrana's got a bunch to do. There's not much we can do there right away. But we're going to be spending a lot of time in Fendrana as time goes on. Get some scans out of the way. The door directly above has been unlocked. Can only kill those with missiles. Technically, charge shots are more powerful. But certain enemies can only be damaged by missiles because they have some sort of armor plating. And anyway, there's tech like this and you can check the scans. It's typically indicating that this has been set up by the space pirates. And the big space pirate presence in Fendrana is going to be kind of where the game starts ramping up a little bit. There's a, a research outpost here. It's like a control center and research outpost. So there's really not much we can do here. And in fact, I don't believe there are even any upgrades for me to pick up here. Except like a main suit upgrade. But there are no missile expansions that I can get to right now. We can't damage these yet. So we need to make sure I get one of those burrowers, burrowers in Magmore. And then also I have to scan my ship. But we'll be getting back to our ship pretty soon. These enemies can be a little irritating. You have to kind of hop around them. Again, rapid fire missile is is typically one of the best ways to. It's kind of hard to do that while you're strafing though, because the missile button is uh, right next to the button I would use to strafe. Guess I could just be strafing in the other direction. So there's an enemy in this room that if you miss it, uh, it only appears one more time in this room before despawning. So we'll be on the lookout for that. Uh, I believe it's it's on the ceiling above us right now. It may be the next room over. I'm not 100% sure. But in any case, uh, we'll be making our way back to it eventually. Okay, so let's climb the room. It's the, the good old ice shriek bat. I actually don't know if this is the room they're in or if they're in the next one. But in any case, we'll, we'll make sure to get them. So that's an ice burrower. I think the one in Magmore is technically different. We'll make sure to scan it. I'm just taking the hits. They really don't do that much damage. 
This is another enemy that only appears in certain sections and then eventually will despawn and be replaced by a different enemy. That's why you typically want to scan stuff as soon as you see it. Uh, we already scanned these in Chozo Ruins. The one in Chozo Ruins exists pretty much to remind you that, hey, you still are missing uh, some things. There's the Ice Shriek Bats. You're still missing some tools. Yeah, so see how I, I was able to shoot two missiles in very quick succession there. That that damage output allows you to kill these baby she-goths very quickly, which I have scanned. I do like to double check that I've I've been scanning properly. As the great poison reaches ever further into the planet, we chose to begin to feel the gnawings of despair. Before it is too late, we now must make our last stand. We have begun to build a temple to contain this darkness. At its heart, we will place a cipher, a, mysterious, a mystical lock powered by twelve artifacts and filled with as much power as we Chozo can harness. We wonder, though, even when we are done, will it be too late? And will the power of the temple and the cipher itself prove strong enough to hold back the poisonous tide that even now swells within the ground, threatening all life? So that actually starts giving us some clues on what we're going to be doing later to actually complete the game. So keep in mind, we came here initially because we were chasing Meta Ridley. And we're, we're looking, it said ground-based recon required, so we're just kind of looking around to see what we can find regarding where Meta Ridley might be. But as the game continues, it's partially still about, you know, detaching the space pirates from this planet completely, but also saving the planet itself based on this great poison. And, and Samus does have a connection to the Chozo and such. Okay, more shiny wall lore. So many creatures suffer beneath the blight upon the land, and we Chozo are no exception. But for all of our pain, we can at least believe in the promise of the future. We have come to believe that a time may never come when we can once again open the door and banish the darkness we've contained. Even so, our vigilance will forever remain. We believe that some far-off day, a savior will come and continue what we have began. For that savior, we will leave our ancient weapons and armor. The soul who can gather them will be the entrusted one. The only being who can reverse the evil that grows here. That's obviously us. Very nice. So this room is where we're going to get our next major suit upgrade. And the platforms are falling behind us, that's why the screen is shaking. Boost Ball Acquired. So this room will give us an opportunity to, to use this and kind of show us where it's applicable. And then you have to think back to all the locations where there might be other, in this case, half pipes that we can use the Boost Ball to reach new areas. And there are two in particular. Let's go ahead and align ourselves. So it's pretty rare the game will give you something and then not give you an opportunity to use it right away to show you how it's usable. But at this point, actually, uh, there's nothing else we can do in Fendrana. There's nowhere else that we can go in Fendrana. Everything is too high for us to jump up. So again, a typical player may end up spending a lot of time here trying to figure out how they can navigate platforms to get higher up in the main room. Kind of part of the adventure part where eventually you deduce, okay, I just need to go somewhere else. I just simply need to go somewhere else. Okay. And now there's some necessary backtracking. There's no other elevator we can get to except Magmore Caverns. But, instead of going all the way back through Magmore and then back through Chozo Ruins, we can take the other path in Magmore 
which will bring us to the other elevator in that in that geothermal power room that I had pointed out, which will connect to Talon Overworld. There are two half pipes that I had discussed that we can use. One is in Chozo Ruins, in the main plaza, which you may remember, but that doesn't actually provide us anything new besides a missile expansion. Uh, the other is in Talon Overworld, and we haven't been to Talon Overworld for a long time, and we barely spent any time there. So, you may have forgotten that, and I think that was very purposeful by the developers, by the people who designed these levels, again, to really encourage you to scour all the different areas where you've been. Because by forcing you to scour the different areas where you've been, you'll start cataloging other locations that you'll have to remember to go back to in the future. And this is kind of a callback to Super Metroid where there's a, a broken uh, broken tube that you can power bomb eventually. Bendesium frame typically means something that can be broken with power bombs. Ow. Fire just shoots from the ceiling. Again, I have enough health where I feel comfortable just going ahead. Taking the damage. Okay. Now, I obviously don't want this thing spitting me into the lava, so that's why I was very careful in getting rid of it. Okay, so this may be a little finicky, just because, again, I'm, I'm using mouse and keyboard to control the morph ball. Sometimes I won't even use spring ball. So... Again, because normally you'd have a joystick to do this. It's much easier to control. But without that joystick, I'm just going to take it slow. Okay, cool. This guy down here is almost definitely going to get me. We'll see. Yep, there we go. Ah! Okay. Well, thankfully we killed this one so we can casually just continue on. And I'll just go ahead and ignore this big boy. Ow. Oh, maybe we won't ignore this big boy. That's fine. Okay. So let's go ahead and scan this, and this will take us back to Talon Overworld. If we were to continue, we wouldn't be able to proceed. We don't have the required technology. But that's fine. Because going back to Talon Overworld is exactly what we want to do. And while we're in Talon Overworld, I'll make sure to scan my ship, get a new suit upgrade that will allow us to progress further into Fendrana. And what I'm going to do is actually go out of my way, again, not an optimal pathing, but to go and visit the Impact Crater, which is what we read about in that Chozo lore text. They said they built a temple above where the Great Poison was that requires a cipher. Uh, so let's go and visit that, and, and that will actually kind of set us on the path of what we actually knew, need to do to finish the game. And again, typically you don't need to go there until the very end. You don't need to go there more than once, but I'm going to go ahead and visit it again just to kind of set the scene for, for kind of what the whole objective of the game is. Kill that one with its own thing, you know? Alright, so maybe you'll recognize where we are. Our ship is back that way. This is where we came into Talon Overworld the very first time, and I talked about Zoomers and TikTok dances. <laughs> and here is our fancy schmancy halfpipe. And again, I feel like it's very easy to forget that this is here on your first playthrough. But once you know it's there, it's very easy to kind of set your mind to where you need to go. Ah, oh, not the zoomers! 
Alright, so let's go ahead and scan our ship while we're here. Hunter-class gunship registered to Samus Aran. You can return to your ship to recharge energy, reload weapons, and save your progress. So this functions as a save station, but you can also refill your missiles while you're there. But now we're on a ledge that we otherwise couldn't get to because of the boost ball. And there's our next suit upgrade. Quite possibly one of the most useful upgrades that you can get. Why don't we go ahead and hit up our ship? So this just allows you to double jump. So you can get much higher. You can just cover more area in midair. Also allows you to double strafe jump as well. Kind of that side hop that we can do. So normally I would start my trek, my pilgrimage, back to Fendrana Drifts. It's not that far. But uh, instead, I'm going to go ahead and head up to the impact crater. Again, to sort of clarify what our mission here is even supposed to be. We can scan some extra things for the logbook. You can technically come here as soon as you land on Talon Overworld. I really just wanted to get started, though. Field team reports are in on an age structure of alien design built on the surface of Talon 4. Studies show this structure projects a containment field. This field bars access to a prime source of energy within a deep crater. Science team believes the field is powered by a number of strange Chozo artifacts. We have found some of these relics and studies on them have begun. As this field could hinder future energy production operations on Talon 4, we must dismantle it as soon as possible. If this means the destruction of the Chozo artifacts, it will be done. So the space pirates are also aware that the artifacts are required. I remember when playing on console, this door right here took a long time to open because it took a long time to load. Because a lot can happen in this room. Throughout our living nightmare, as we battle with the unyielding darkness, we chose to see a light. This light glows with promise, chasing the shadows cast by the great poison and purifying that which has grown toxic. It is strange, though. At times it looks to our eyes as if the light coalesces into the figure of a woman. Burning brightly, the luminescence descends from space, then retreats back into the infinite blackness from whence it came. When this prophecy comes to pass, when the light recedes, the Chozo's long vigilance of containment will finally come to an end. Some of these prophecies are a little on the nose, I think. The containment of the Great Poison. This task has fallen to the Chozo, and we will not flee from our duty. Even as we suffer with the land and its creatures, we will pour our will into the Twelve, the artifacts that, when brought together, form the lock that holds this great evil at bay in the depths of the planet. This lock must stand up to all who must come to assault it, to preserve the power of the seal, and to protect it from those who would... Who would... What, what was the word? It was something life for their own desires. We will spread the artifacts across the land, hiding them from prying eyes. The lock must never open until the day comes when this disaster can finally be put right. I scrawled the text a little too fast. So this is the temple, and we're going to have to find the artifacts and then bring them here. Collect it, then scan the totems here for clues on the locations of the remaining artifacts. Together, the artifacts will open a path to the center of the impact crater. A.K.A. the end of the game. So the artifacts are all over the world. In fact, we've, we've gone by several of them, but we didn't have the tools to collect them yet. Cool. So we have the first one. And we'll be collecting them just all throughout the game. We're going to get most of them near the end, though, because you don't have the required things to pick them up until the end. So we can scan these for logbooks. But it's not necessary, because these are... Well, basically, by scanning these, it's giving you hints on where the artifacts are. But we, again, don't really have the tools to collect pretty much any of them. There's one in Magmore we could get now. But there's also another upgrade in the same room that we can't get, so I'm just going to get those, those two things together in the future. For example. But by scanning those, again, that just gives you sort of vague hints. Typically, the hints will have 
a word from the name of the room that the artifacts are in, as well as some flavor text that kind of gives you a hint on like what zone it might be in. Obviously, I know where they all are, so we're just going to kind of collect them along the way in what I think will be a pretty efficient way. And now, as I said, we're going to start our pilgrimage back to Fendrana Drifts, which we can do uh, by taking two different paths. We could either go back through the Root Cave, which will take us back to Magmore, which will then take us back to Fendrana, which is how we got here. The issue with that is there's, there are no upgrades that we can get along the way taking that path. It's just a strict, bland backtrack. Instead, I'm actually going to go back through Chozo Ruins. And I can highlight... Um, we, I can highlight a, a pathway that I've now opened up, and I can get upgrades along the way. Again, we can do a, a bit of a, a cleanup pathway through Chozo Ruins, which will result in taking us right back to the Magmore Caverns elevator, and then we take the same path to Fendrana that we took to get there in the first place. And we can scan that Burrower, too. One charged shot. All right, so now we can grab this missile expansion since we have the boost ball. And using mouse and keyboard, it's a little weird aligning yourself with the boost ball. There we go. It's easy to kind of get off... off track. Okay, so now we're going to take the path straight through to where the hive mecha was. And along the way, there are two more missile expansions that we can now get because we have the Morph Ball and Morph Ball Bombs. And I could have gotten these after we killed Flagra as well, or really just after we got the Morph Ball Bombs, but I feel like this is a fairly efficient way to, to pick this stuff up. Hello? You have to bomb that first, else you won't be able to continue through the the wall crevices. I feel like maybe it's awkward and mildly eerie when I don't commentate. Like I'm actively trying to not talk at times. Uh, and I guess, again, if that feels strange, it, I guess that's kind of the point, you know? Just because the, the atmosphere is supposed to feel a little isolating in that way. I haven't really decided when I'll stop this episode. Probably when we get the next major pickup item, which is going to result in, uh, from, I should say, a mini-boss fight. Okay, so that's where we got that energy tank, but now we can progress through this Morph Ball tunnel. And look where we are. The Magmore Caverns Elevator. So there's nothing to collect for us. There's nothing to collect, I should say. Nothing to pick up for us in Magmore Caverns at all. Magmore in general just doesn't have that many things to pick up. So we're just going to make a beeline straight back to Fendrana. But also having Space Jump allows us to skip some parts. Or not really skip, but to, you know, move a little quickly through other rooms that may have taken us a bit longer in, in the past. There we go. So we got the, the Ice Burrower and the Normal Burrower now. 
So this is where, you know, I'll just, I'll take the damage. You could skip just the mildest amount. Eventually, when you get your grapple beam back, you'll be able to just grapple through these rooms and it'll be that much faster. And then this room, because we've got double jump, we can just go right over the top. I think part of the reason why I like taking this pathway back is because it, it, it highlights specifically the jump boots. Okay, don't, don't fall because of these things, Chaperino. Don't, don't fall. Ha! No lava that time. Still probably worth killing these just because they're going to shoot you on your way up. It can be kind of irritating. I might have been able to skip part of this by just jumping straight to the central section with jump boots. So if you jump up there, now that we have space jump, we could get a second artifact. Uh, but again, uh, that same room has another item pickup in it that we can't get, so I'm just going to get them both at once much later in the game. And just like that, we're back to Fendrana. In fact, I think I know exactly which save station I'm going to stop at today. And it's not going to be the first one in Fendrana. I love Fendrana's music. It's probably my favorite in the game. So now that we have space jump boots... we can make our way up here. And here's a section we haven't been through yet. You have to be careful when you charge up because it will draw these electrical enemies to you. It'll just pull them right into your face. A, a unique scan in here. I think there's there might be one or two other rooms where these uh, ice parasites appear in, but this room, they only appear now and will disappear later, so it's usually better to get them here because you're not going to come upon the other room where they exist until much later, at which point you may forget that you even need to scan them. Speaking of missing scans, am I, am I good on my scans right now? I don't think I've missed anything. Uh, the only thing that I can think of needing right now is... Um, the highest level missile pickup. We're supposed to scan out the, the different statue heads to realize one of them is cracked. Uh, we can't get in here yet until much later in the game. This isn't even really a puzzle, it's just kind of lame. Oh my goodness, there we go. Here's our next major upgrade, which is the wave beam. Okay, so now we have to fight several Shigoths. Hey, 
I do feel missiles, again, while lower damage than your charge blast, still tends to break their their backs, their ice backs, a little bit easier. Simply because it's, it's like, it's, I don't know if like the damage values it's considered like explosive damage or what, but. All right, Mama Shigoth is not happy. Supreme Predator of the Fendrana Drifts. Shigoths are invulnerable to most beam weapons. The crystals on their back absorb energy, which they can fire at prey. Shigoths have poor stamina. They hyperventilate after using their breath attack, making their mouth area vulnerable. The soft underbelly of a Shigoth is susceptible to concussive blasts. In battle, they expel blasts of frigid gas to ensnare their targets. They're also fond of ramming and trampling their hapless prey. So what this is saying is basically shoot it to force it to use a certain type of attack, and then it will be tired like that. And that gives you an opportunity to do damage to it while it's... And sometimes you can get two or three missile hits in, especially with the rapid-fire missiles. Typically, you're only going to be able to get one in. But with the rapid-fire, I can get three. Uh, it also said that its underbelly is typically exposed, and what you can do with that is uh, just use Morph Ball Bombs. But I obviously don't want to get hit with the frost bolts. There we go. Typically that takes a lot longer, but because we were able to get two or three missiles in per cycle with the, the rapid fire... I, I don't want to say it's an exploit per se. It's basically an exploit. Uh, it goes a little bit faster. Okay, this I think is our highest level missile pickup. So now we have all of our energy and missile pickups scanned. And I have the wave beam now, which is a, an electrical type attack. So the power beam is like our very basic, like normal damage. And then we have electrical damage. And then eventually we'll be getting two more beams. So now we have to think about what the wave beam unlocks, and it's actually only one very specific place. There was one room in Fendrana Drifts that was a wave beam door. And now we can get to it. Now that we have the space jump boots, we can also skip uh, and get get back to the that room where the wave beam door is much faster by jumping up here and then up here. I'll just ignore those she-goths. No reason to antagonize them. We have space jump now, so we can hop up here. So you need the wave beam and space jump in order to get up to the other door. Ice Shriek Bats, I've already scanned you. Uh, okay, yeah, I was gonna say, I don't think those are like normal, I think they're still normal scarabs. I think this room exists basically to function to say, hey, sometimes it's still worth switching back to your power beam because you can shoot very quickly and kill these scarabs very fast. Or you can just um, jump through them and take the damage. It doesn't matter. So we scan. This is a spinner. Just We can power things using the boost ball. This is a magnetic rail. We cannot interact with this yet. Now, I'm actually going to kill these things... Because as we're trying to climb this room, they can knock you off. Puzzle music, I guess.
So this is actually the room that connects to the next main boss, interestingly enough. But we cannot get there. We won't be able to for a little bit. So we'll have to climb this twice, because the first time we want to hop down here instead. No, don't fall. Spring ball, please. Because energy tank, always worth going out of your way for, I feel like. I think for the most part, I, I do end up picking up most of the energy tanks along the way that are like right by me. We're not leaving any behind that we could have gotten. And a lot of them were like in Chozo Ruins where you have to go forward one or two rooms to realize it's a dead end, but hey, at least there's an energy tank. I'll definitely pick those up. Okay, very nice. So now we're at the top. And conveniently, there is a save station here. And I think this would be a great spot to stop for today. Scan these. Personal bound for research area, proceed directly to checkpoint. Proceed through the purple doors to the south to get to research lab Hydra. Very nice. Well, we've made a lot of progress today. I think next time we're going to make our way through the Space Pirate Command research area in Fendrana Drifts and probably fight the zone boss for Fendrana. All right, thanks everyone for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.